Hello there and welcome to the Air Equipment LLC YouTube channel. My name is Bill Dunn and I am the Engineering Marketing Manager here at Air Equipment in lovely downtown East Hartford, Connecticut. And today our topic is HVAC noise control. All sound can be described as the transmission of acoustical energy via waves through a medium, a medium such as air or water or steel. Now, all sound can be described as having two aspects. The first is the level or the loudness. The higher the level, then the more acoustical energy is present and it's louder. And we measure the level or the loudness in decibels. So the, the greater number of decibels present, then the louder it is. The other aspect of sound is the frequency or the pitch. And the frequency measures the size of the wavelength and as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases and the pitch goes up. On this graph here, we show the level on the vertical axis measured in decibels and the frequency on the horizontal axis measured in hertz. Now, it's very rare that someone will be exposed to a single pure tone of one single frequency. That usually only occurs in a laboratory setting. Out in the uh, everyday world, we are exposed to a wide spectrum of sound, many different frequencies at many different decibel levels. So we just have this, this wide spectrum that our ears are taking in at all times. An important measurement in acoustical science is what we call the sound power level. And the sound power level is a measurement of how much acoustical energy is being emitted by a noise source. We measure sound power in watts, but quickly convert it to decibels, which is a much more uh, easy unit of measure to work with. And the sound power level, or how much energy is being emitted by a noise source, is a crucial piece of information needed to do any kind of acoustical calculations. And it's used to rate uh, various pieces of equipment, such as fans and air handlers and VAV boxes. Another important aspect is what we call sound pressure level. The sound pressure is how much acoustical energy is being uh, sensed in a particular environment. It's what our ears can hear. And unlike sound power, which is just a raw number of how much uh, of a level of acoustical energy being emitted by a noise source, the sound pressure level is dependent on the distance and the environment. Uh, often it's gets confusing. People uh, will often uh, confuse sound power and sound pressure because both are measured in decibels. It, it rarely happens in, say, uh, when we're talking about heat. You know, for example, a boiler is rated for how many BTUs it can output, while a space, a room, we measure the temperature in the room in degrees Fahrenheit. We never say the boiler outputs 72 degrees of, of heat energy, and we never say the room has 1 million BTUs of heat, so we don't confuse those when we talk about heat. But with sound, it can be confusing because both sound power and sound pressure are measured in decibels. A little trick, a little way to kind of keep them clear in your mind is to think of sound power, pow, the little explosion of energy. That's where the noise is originating from, the noise source, pow, power. And then think of pressure. How do, how do our ears even work? The eardrum senses the, the sound waves pressing against it, the pressure of the sound waves, and translates that into sound that our brains can comprehend. So the source of the noise is the pow, power, sound power. How we perceive it in a space is the pressure, as those sound waves are pressing against our eardrums. Now, with sound pressure and the decibel scale, um, the th actual threshold of hearing is at zero decibels, and then the threshold of pain the point at which eardrums start to bleed is 140 decibels. And if you look at this little uh, cartoon illustration here, you can see that down in the very low range, you know, 0, 10, 20 decibels, it's whisper quiet. Then when you move up to, say, 30 or 40 decibels, that might be the sound level in a very quiet library setting. Then 50 or 60 decibels, that would be the sound level, uh, conversational speech, people within a couple feet of each other just having a chat. Then when you get up to say 80 or 90 decibels, that gets much louder and that would be say out on a, uh, a city street with a lot of vehicular traffic. 
when you get up to about 110 decibels, that would be very, very loud, like the, the noise level at a rock and roll concert inside an auditorium. Then when you get up to 120 decibels, now you're talking the sound being made by a jet engine when it takes off. And then finally, at the very top of the scale, 140 decibels, that would be the sound being emitted by uh, the space shuttle or some rocket being launched. Little rule of thumb with decibels, if the difference in loudness is plus or minus one decibel, that's not noticeable. Human ear can't dif differentiate between those very fine differences. If the level of loudness differs by say plus or minus three decibels, that is noticeable. That human ears will pick that up. So you might wanna keep that in mind when reviewing submittals, if a piece of equipment submitted has a decibel level of one decibel louder than what you specified, it won't be a problem. There, people will not be able to tell the difference. However, if it's three or more decibels louder, it might be a problem. You might need to uh, take a look at that and make sure you're not gonna have a noise complaint in the space. Now, if there's a difference in decibels of plus or minus 10 dB, that is either twice as loud or half as loud. You see, the decibel scale is logarithmic and it's designed that every 10 decibels, the noise levels doubles. So plus or minus 20 decibels would be four times as loud or one fourth as loud. This is why if we have a situation where there's say the noise level in a space is 70 decibels, if we can reduce that by just 10, it doesn't really seem like that much, but going from 70 to 60 actually reduces the noise level in half. Decibel math, when we have multiple noise sources in the same space, we can't just add up their decibel levels. You know, one's 50 and the other one's 49. We can't say the total noise level is 99 decibels because actually being logarithmic, uh, going from 50 decibels to let's call it 100 decibels is not doubling the loudness. That's 32 times louder. So obviously that's not what's happening. What you do when you have multiple noise sources in the same space, just a little rule of thumb to make it simple, is if the difference in noise level is zero or one decibel, you take the louder noise source, add three to it, and that's your net result in that space. So the example I just mentioned, one noise source at 50, one at 49, you take the louder one 50, you add three to it, so the net effect in that space is 53 decibels. If the difference in decibel levels is two or three, you take the louder one and add two to it. If the difference is between four and eight decibels, you take the louder one and add one decibel to it. And finally, if the difference in decibel levels is nine or more, then you just take the louder noise source and that's it. Because as we said, when you add 10 decibels, plus 10 decibels is doubling the loudness. So essentially, if you have two noise sources and one is nine or 10 or more decibels louder than the other, it is completely drowning it out. With frequency, and I'm not musical, but if you can envision a, a piano keyboard, at the left end, the low frequency, the very uh, low notes in pitch, they have very long wavelengths. And as you move from left to right, the, the pitch increases until you get to the far right side of the keyboard and it's a very, very high pitched note. Well, in the HVAC world, we have uh, taken a term from music, the octave, and at the center of eight consecutive octave bands, we have zeroed in on certain frequencies, a total of eight of them, and those are the frequencies that we examine when doing any kind of HVAC noise calculations. The first one, the lowest one at the first octave band is 62 and a half hertz, or we call it 63. Then 125, 250, 500, 1000, 2000, 4000, and then finally 8000 hertz. This gives us a nice wide spectrum of the, the typical noise frequencies that human ears are exposed to. It's also in the same range that most HVAC equipment is emitting noise. So when we examine those eight frequencies, we're doing a great job of, of covering the whole spectrum and that those are the frequencies we use in uh, say publishing performance data for a piece of equipment or determining how much noise needs to be uh, attenuated in a space to keep the, uh, the, the overall sound levels in the space acceptable. Mm -hmm.